Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? Well, actually, I live in Delaware now, so does that make me a Delawarean? You sing it, girl. You know, Beyonce is my friend in my head. They're my people sometimes, too. You know, when I was a kid, I had an imaginary enemy. Like, does that make me crazy? As P presented by Say What Radio. Hello, what's the deal? Welcome to Life as P. If this is your first time listening, thank you. I appreciate you joining me. I am your host, Phoenix Ash. If you are a repeat listener, good looking. Thanks for coming back. Appreciate you. You know, I got love for all of you guys, especially y'all who got like lots of conversation for me. <laughs> I love talking offline because you guys crack me up. <sighs> If you've listened before, you know that I do themes about like messages that have been coming through me as I go through my journey evolving as a writer, producer, script writer, (laughs) single mom. And if you follow me for a while, you know that that's not how I started my journey. But here I am. (laughs) And I, I don't have any regrets right now, which is a very important place for me to be in my life because two years ago, if you would have sat me down offline, right? Not necessarily on the show, but if you just sat me down and maybe on the show, I don't know if I recorded any of those thoughts, but I had a lot of regrets, a lot of contemplation about like where I felt I was moving wrong or I had accepted something in my life for a long period of time that truly wasn't emotionally healthy for me. It's not, you know, definitely not a man bashing session. So I do have those, though. I'm, I can't front. I do have those because, you know, I'm in my dating stage, right? So when I go through <laughs> and I meet people who have, they're just abnormal. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. People out here be crazy. Like, if I tell you some of the stories, my goodness. Oh, my God. You got to listen to when me and Just from Say What Radio, when we do our crossover shows. Yo, subscribe to Say What Radio, because that's how you'll really know about the crossover shows. But, yo, son, (laughs) be like, "Eh? what's wrong with people? And then every once in a while, you know, there's some, I don't know. But either way, it's just, it's crazy. (laughs) Lord, I pray for consistency. But anywho, I wanted to talk to you guys today about what voice you're listening to? Like, whose voice do you hear? And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because there was an incident that happened when I was on site with my sponsor. And I had to deal with someone who was coming in looking for work. And although the incident was just a day in my week, I feel like it impacted me enough to think about it the next day. And then I really wasn't sure like what other messages were coming in earlier in the week because I really was just trying to contemplate like what would make someone act this way, what would make someone come to a place that they want to be employed by and act a damn fool. (laughs) So, And it just occurred to me that it's because this is the message that's coming to me. It's going to block out all. And I really want to know whose voice this person was listening to. And the reason why I say that is because, like I said, they came to a place of employment looking for a job. And things were not necessarily going the way that they wanted to. They came in hot. Okay, they had been there before applying for a job and there was an error in some background stuff that was done and they needed to come back again. And they truly were not appreciative of the fact that they had to come back again, where I could see the annoyance you taking time out your day to do something twice. I get that. However, the other option could have been to not call you back and you just not have a job and you just like suck on those rocks. Like, I don't know. So I felt like, you know, and, and the guy, it was a guy, and he was like going ballistic. He was rolling up, you know, getting way too close to people. We got a whole pandemic out here. People are already afraid to get sick. 
There are so many people who are working from home, who are caring for their children. So the people who are going into an office or to a warehouse or to wherever, grocery store, wherever, they're going every day. There's like a undertone of fear for a lot of those people. Every day they feel like, you know, there's a group of people who feel like, you know, I'm putting my life on the line in order to make a living. And I'm trying to submit to what the requirements are in order for me to make the living that I need. And that's an undertone. So, you know, you try to go about your day and you try to interact with people the best way possible. But when someone closes in on your space, you know, there's a different kind of defense mechanism that goes up. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm one of those people prior to the pandemic. If I don't know you and you get too close to me, I'm offended. I'm stepping back. I'm stepping to the side. I'm asking you like, oh, can you move back just a little bit, please? You know, that's just me because, you know, my personal space is reserved for me and my persons. (laughs) I don't know you. (laughs) So please do not roll up on me. So anyhow, this person like act a fool was not listening to what the process was, did not realize that the person they were talking to would be accommodating them. So like they came, they didn't have an appointment. So they thought they had an appointment. They received the email and, you know, the person at the check-in desk is like, you're not on my appointment list. However, however, I'm going to see if I can make you an appointment today. And they were like, I'm not making no appointment. And da 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 And I really think it just didn't correlate for him that this appointment... (laughs) that was necessary because these people see people appointment only that when the check-in person said they're going to make an appointment, they were saying, I'm going to make an appointment. Like I'm going to give you an appointment for today so that I can service you today so that I can see you today. But I think that the guy was so like far in his head and so hot and so resolved to being upset that he couldn't really hear that there was a solution being presented. He couldn't hear it. He was so far. And I'm just like, what voice is that? That's your voice. You're speaking to yourself. So what voice are you speaking to yourself in? Because I would hate, and I'm sure I have, but I would hate to to like know that I'm in a position where I'm so caught up in the passion of my emotions that I don't hear the solution being presented right there in my face, that I don't give a person a chance to say, hey, this is what the deal is. It's not that bad, that I've already decided that my day is bad, my week is bad, my situation is bad, that everything is so bad. I've already decided that I'm in a bad space, I'm in a bad mood, I'm annoyed, that I don't hear another voice but my own. I feel like that's a dangerous place to be. It really is because, you know, particularly when you are trying to pursue your dream or trying to pursue your goals, your career, your passions, when you're trying to pursue those things and something doesn't go right, because a lot of times something doesn't go right. Okay, if we could all choreograph everything to go right, things wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? So like... There's a lot of occasions where things just don't go right. So how do we like step outside of ourselves and keep ourselves calm enough to be able to hear or see the solution being presented? Because I know for myself, a lot of times when I look back on situations, I'd be like, you know what? If I just shut up for a second, that solution was right there. It was sitting the whole time. When I saw the solution, it hadn't moved. It didn't get closer to me. It didn't wave its hand. It didn't do any of that. I just, when I finally muted myself, I was able to see or hear what it was. And it was simple. Nine times out of 10, it's a simple solution. And I can just, you know, scoop up on it real quick. And I felt Like, if this guy would just take a second, (laughs) get out of his head, 
shut the fuck up for a second. He would have known. And he, not only was he so far in his voice, and I feel like this happens too, not only was he so focused on his own emotion, on his own voice, that he kept escalating. But like no one was escalating with him. He was escalating himself. And it was like, boy, you going to work yourself up? You know, by the time he got to the door, he had told the check-in person, fuck you. And I'm just like, so you giving up on the job? That's what it sound like to me. You giving up on it. You decided you don't want the job. Like that to me, like you just made the decision for yourself. So not only did you come down the first time and go through the process the first time, you submitted enough, right? You obliged, you, you did enough to come down the second time. So you come the second time, but you still leave without that job. You still leave without doing the necessary process in order to make it to the next step. So you had already determined that your second trip would be a waste of time. And you fulfilled your own prophecy. You already made the determination that this is going to be a waste of time. And so your actions went in line with what you were resolved to and you fulfilled your own prophecy unnecessarily. How many times do we do that? Like how many times do we just determine that this is going to be a waste of time? You know, I look, as a woman, the story isn't new. I'm not the only one who's experienced it. Other women are not, you know, alone in experiencing it. But like, you know, you get into a new relationship or you get into a new situation, right? Because there's a lot of that going on. <laughs> um, you get into a new situation and you're determined that this person is going to hurt me. Maybe it's because, well, you know, I like them too much. And when I like someone this amount, it never turns out well. Or I like him too fast. And so because you going on, who knows the invisible timeline that you going on that <laughs> somebody said is too fast. Somebody said that, you you know, somebody somewhere is trying to set up blockers for you. Don't do that. Do not go on somebody else's timeline because I'm going to tell you, I have, and you know, social media is crazy, right? You can't live your life by social media because, first of all, it's going to have you confused because as much information as there is to support one thing, there's just as much information to support something else. So if you live your life based upon that, you will literally be in a state of confusion and you would just jack yourself up. So like, I see like stuff like, you know, if you're not married within, I don't know, however many years of dating, or if after however many years he's still not ready, then you're not his wife, sis. Like, because a man knows, you know, right away and whatever. And I feel like for some men, that might be true. However, I've also seen other men in situations where they've dated someone for a long time. You know, my homeboy, he's an example. He's been with his girl for, I don't know, maybe like five, six years. And he just recently proposed to her. But when you see him talk about her, that is, that's his baby. That is his boo. <laughs> you can't say nothing. That is his girl. And he going to hold her down to the ends of the earth. Ends of the earth. And if she went on somebody else's timeline, if she listened to you know, the inner voice that's created by modeling yourself after people you don't know, she would have walked away from something that she was totally comfortable with. She was totally invested in. She's not the type of person she has not like harassed, like when we get married, when we get married, you know, she just, they just had a good vibe and they kept with the good vibe. They're both goal oriented. They're pursuing their passions, pursuing their dreams. They're just pushing. And, you know, the time was right when the time was right. So, you know, sometimes you do want to listen to your own voice, but you want to weigh out things properly. You don't want to create this inner voice based upon things that 
you're resolved to like, this should be this way, X, Y, and Z. And if it's not this way, I'm going to act the whole fucking fool. Like, you know, she could have easily been like, you know, well, my parents dated for two years before they got married. And so it's this way. And after two years, I'm going to act the whole flipping ass because you're not marrying me. Like, nah, don't do that. Don't be so resolved in like, okay, it didn't happen on my timeline. And I think the guy who came in for the job, that's what happened. He came in for a process and he expected a particular timeline. He expected to hear back. He got a job. He expected to get a start date. He expected some things. And when they came back and said, Ever, that email that came in, that came in from the company, he probably was excited to open that email. And finding out that there was an error was a disappointment. And I get the disappointment. I do. It happens. Like I said, you know, you've been through relationships or whatever. You get disappointed by people. People can be extremely disappointing. But you can't be so resolved that this is going to be the same. You know, maybe he, you know, been turned down for jobs in the past. Maybe, you know, things had not been going right. Maybe he was having baby mama drama. I don't know. Boyfriend drama. I don't know. (laughs) Whatever it was that was going on with him, he was stuck in it. And he only heard the voices of that. He heard that I'm pissed, I'm I'm annoyed, this is a waste of my time, and everything he did was in line with those thoughts, and he fulfilled his own prophecy. Hopefully he predicted that he wasn't going to get a job, because then, you know, at least he'd be right in some area. So, like, you know, back on relationship stuff, like, my homeboy and my homegirl, like, Love them. But, you know, they couldn't go based upon, like, this strict, like, this is what my expectations are. And, you know, this is a big thing for me because when I have expectations, it's very difficult for me to let go. And so that's why I know this was a message for me. (laughs) I didn't know it was. When I have set expectations, it is crushing to let them go. When people present themselves to be a certain kind of way or to be a certain to have a certain level of integrity, to be thorough. You know, I'm from the borough, right? I'm from Brooklyn. So I'm like, I'm from the thorough borough. I expect you to be authentic. I expect you to keep your word. I expect that even if the truth is harsh, you'll share it with me and understand that it's my responsibility to work out how I'm going to take it. So I get disappointed a lot and I have these expectations and it's so heartbreaking. It really is to go through the process of being disappointed by people. It really is. Like, I have these expectations. Like, this is going to... I disappoint myself, you know. Savage Fever, you know, that's my baby. That's the series that's out now. And I had intentions of releasing episode two earlier this month. Now, it's not going to be long before it comes because I've turned it in. Yeah, baby. I did turn it in. However... My expectations weren't met and it was like a crushing blow. And I really had to sit with my emotions and sit with my feelings and was like, yeah, but, you know, you set this expectation. You also, though, told yourself, like, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know if this, you know, date makes sense for me. And so everything you did in line fell with that. It did. Everything I did in line fell with that because that's the voice I heard. That was the voice I was listening to that. I don't know if that doubt, that doubt, like, I don't know if this, because I tell you, that book could have been finished. It was nights that I was like, I'm just going to go to sleep. Okay. There was times where, yes, it was hectic when I was on site with my sponsor, but I had the opportunity to be like, you know what? talk to my coworkers. Let me walk away for an hour or something. Let me just get some work done. And they totally would have supported that. But I didn't do it because I was already full of doubt. I was already thinking that I was not going to make this deadline. And so I didn't make it because I was consumed with that. I was consumed with doubt. I didn't make it because that's all I heard was the doubt. And you would think that as much as I do this podcast, <laughs> then I would <laughs> talk myself into some good shit. <laughs> but it did not. I did not. I'm going to try not to do that for episode three because I got to get that shit out. I'm sorry, you know, if you're sensitive to my cursing. I feel like I curse more often than I used to, but such is life. Anyhow, I just need you to ask yourself, oh, my God, the train is passing by and it's just going to beep all my life. But whatever. I'll blow his horn rather. It's not a beep. 
and I'm sitting outside because, you know, I love outside. But anyhow, what I'm saying is like, whose voice are you listening to? When you're pursuing your goals and you're pursuing your passions and you are trying to level up or just push harder or like it's within grasp, like make sure that you listen into the right voice and how you know it's the right voice is because it's encouraging, because it's telling you that you can do it, because it's telling you that you can push past. It's telling you that you can grab the pinnacle. It's telling you that it's right there. It's telling you that you have accomplished so much and you have overcome so much that what's another thing to overcome? What's another thing to accomplish? That's how you know it's the right voice. That's how you know. Now, not to say that doubt doesn't play a role or fear doesn't play a role, right? Because that, I feel like, is our protection mechanism to say, like, you know, hold on a second. Let's think about this a second. And that's okay. That's okay. I feel like, you know, to listen to both voices may serve a purpose. However, I'm like, don't get stuck in the one. Don't get stuck in the one, for real. Some some people stuck in the positive voice a little too much, I know it sounds crazy, but some people get stuck in a positive voice too much. You know who those people are? The people who keep harassing (laughs) their professors or harass the job that they want and come and keep calling and keep going up there to the point where they ruin their reputation. And they're like, I can't hire you because look, the guy, you acting a damn fool, but his wasn't a positive situation. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to get a status update. Let me call. Let me call. Let me call. I had one job where... Somebody was looking for a status update to their interview. And oh my God, that person didn't just call every day. They called like three times a day. Like they was trying to catch the decision maker in the middle of making a decision or in the middle of their thought process or something. And it was just like, yo, dog, I know you want this thing. And I know you say, but my thing is, is like, maybe, you know what? That's a bad example. <laughs> Cause I'm like, maybe the positive voice wasn't active because the positive voice would have told you it was yours and that you didn't have to do all of that. I'm a firm believer in what's yours got your name on it. So I will put out my effort. I will do my best, but I'm not going, you know, do cartwheels around the subject and thinking that like, you know, this time I'm make it mine. Because when I've ever tried to, and I've talked about this on the show before, when I've ever tried to force something, You know, I may accomplish it, but the aftermath is nasty. It's nasty. It's like, yo, why did I even force that? It didn't work out in my favor in the long run. So I try to be chill and just try to be like, yo, if it's mine, it's mine. I did the best that I could. I put the best effort. Same thing in relationships, for real, for real. I think that that is like just adopting that mindset over the past couple months has helped me deal with my disappointment in people. It's just like, you know, if what we got going on between you and I, if that's supposed to be for me and I'm supposed to be for you, then it's going to be. But I'm not going to do cartwheels around you, cartwheels around the subject. You know, there was a time where I would do cartwheels. You know, I was in a whole marriage for half my life. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I was cartwheeling around a, a whole bunch of stuff in order to make it happen and make it forced. But here we are. <laughs> here we are in this result where we are not together. And although I feel better for it, I feel like it was a long time coming and it should have came a long time ago. This is something that should have ended five years ago. Thank God it didn't because my daughter's going to be five and... I couldn't imagine her being anybody else than who she is. And fortunately slash unfortunately, like she can't be who she is without having that little bit of me and a little bit of him. Like that's what makes her who she is. She she has her own self and her own self-awareness and her own identity, but she has some of my traits. She has some of his and, you know, they come up with a mix to make, you know, her personality. And I love her to death. So... But yeah, like just who voice are you listening to? What voice are you listening to? Is it that voice of doubt or is it that voice of victory? That thing that says, you know, you got it. And if you don't got it, it wasn't yours. You put your best foot forward. It wasn't yours. You know, when I meet someone and we got a good vibe and let me tell you, I don't meet a lot of people that I got a good vibe with. Did I tell y'all about my date from hell? Oh, my God. I don't know. We might do that on a crossover show because it was horrible. It was really, 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 really bad. 
<laughs> I, was, I was like, who? What? Nah, son. <laughs> it was just like, what is wrong with you? Anyway, I feel like that should be my next show. What is wrong with you? Because <laughs> I've been asking that question a lot. Sometimes of myself. Anyway, I just want you to like keep note of the voice that you're listening to because we do sometimes self-fulfill our prophecies by sticking. And that's the whole reason why people say, you know, do self-affirmations in the morning or in the afternoon or at night before you go to bed. Like look in the mirror and say all these positive things because once your mind starts to believe those positive things, all your actions are going to be in line with that. And you very well have the power to fulfill your prophecy. But if you don't believe that and you're focused on the doubt and you're focused on the disbelief, focused on the, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to do this. This is, you know, too much for me. It's going to be too much for you. Once you have declared that this is too much for me, it's going to be too much for you. So, you know, decide what it is that you want to declare and give yourself the freedom to change your mind. I'm one of those people that are like, oh, you all, you know, my parents would be like, you all over the place. You can't focus on any one thing. And I used to think that that was a bad thing until I got older and I started to realize, well, because maybe I'm gifted in more than one area. And the wildest thing is that those different areas where I'm gifted, they actually kind of play into each other. One feeds off the other, one makes the other better. So in a way, it is a focus. Just... Because you're outside of the gift, because you're outside of the creativity, you just couldn't target it. You couldn't figure it out. And it wasn't for you to target. It wasn't for you to figure out. It was for me. It was for me. So there's that gem. All right, y'all. <laughs> I know I've talked to Errol because <laughs> that's what I do, right? If you want to hit me up, definitely do that. I'm at P Writes on Instagram. I'm at P Writes on Twitter. Yo, sometimes my Twitter tweets are like, kind of reckless, but you just got to love me anyway. <laughs> it's like, you just, just roll. <laughs> just roll. Please don't chastise though. Oh my God. I can't stand when somebody's like, take this down. But if you don't sit the hell down. Anyway, if you want to check out like how my evolution is going, particularly if you've like know how the show began and so forth, and you want to check out some books, Touch Me First, which was my first erotica and it debuted at number one on a Black Erotica chart on Amazon. You could definitely pick that up. It's available on Kindle, Kindle Unlimited. It's available on paperback. That's available now. Woohoo! Delectable, A Sweet Romance. That, you know, was my first romance novel. That was my first, like, real, true romance. And I'm so proud of it because I really enjoyed writing it and I enjoyed reading it when I went back over it. So... That, too, is available on Amazon Books. It's available on Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. Savage Fever, which is the first episode in my series, Savage Fever. So Drops of Fire is episode one. I got a lot of great feedback. I'm telling you, it's literally like TV in a book. Pick it up. Yo, Drop Savage is a beast, yo. (laughs) She is a true beast. Pick it up. Episode two is coming right behind it. So you want to just like strap up with episode one and know what's happening. So you don't come in like, wait, what? Yo, it's dope. I said, I'm definitely proud of it. This is probably like, this is my baby here. My pride and joy. I'm sure I'll have a lot more to say next week. <laughs> Until the next time when we could exchange power. Love you. Peace. <laughs>